Hello, everyone, and welcome into another episode of The Heel Brothers. It is myself, Nathan, and Mr. Allen here once again uh, with the official road to Charlotte. September 2nd at 7.30 p.m., North Carolina takes on the South Carolina Gamecocks. It is the Battle of the Carolinas. We are going to be there. But the number have, 21 North Carolina oh, Tar Heels. As of today, AP 21 year UNC Tar Heels start out number 21 in the nation this year. Uh, interesting. I have to get your thoughts on, on that towards the back half of this, but we're going to open up this road to Charlotte, if you will, with mm. looking at this year's offense. Oh, man. Been a few changes that's come over the offense uh, over the past seven months. And uh, a lot of new faces have uh, or one. We've lost some some old faces that we're going to miss for sure. And we've brought in some new faces that we hope to make us uh, that much more dynamic. One in particular that we are still hoping gets his justice from the NCAA. We'll, we'll see about that. But, uh, Alan, I got to ask you, man. Take that. No joke. We are less than three weeks away as of today. Today, as we're recording this right now, it is August 14th. You probably guys have seen this on the 15th, maybe the 16th, but the uh, 14th while we're doing it right now. But, uh, Alan, I got to ask, how do you like the UNC offense this season? What does it look like to you? Well, I mean, I guess it's, it's, that's a good question. It is. <laughs> uh, I mean, you got new wide receivers. You got a new offensive coordinator. You got new offensive coaches. Is it still going to be the Phil Longo, the Phil Longo of the world's air raid where we're just, you know, throwing it all over the place and drink make a big rusher, which nobody hopes happens? Yeah. Um, or are we going to have some semblance of a running game? I don't know. I'm gonna, you asked me a question. I'm, I'm going to ask you the big question. Okay. Is there more pressure on Chip Lindsey to repeat or have this offense look as competent as the offenses that North Carolina has old? Because what happens if, say, the offense sputters? You have Drake May at quarterback, a Heisman candidate what if he doesn't have a year like he had last year what if this he doesn't get going in this offense? well to actually answer your question i think the answer of it is yes and no and let me explain what i mean by that uh on the yes side of things is yeah the offense has still got to produce numbers it's actually one thing yep. that i'm not really worried about because chip Lindsay has produced really good offenses uh, in his in his years, we saw UCF turn into a pretty pretty solid offensive uh, stout team over there, and um, you know UCF was not a not a pushover by any chance on offense. They you know he was producing top twenty five offenses yeah. uh, while he was over there, and all the other places that he had been to as well. Uh, didn't have as much success as a head coach, but as an offensive coordinator, he was pretty pretty doggone good. Uh, not only that, he brings in his best friend and and, Ch uh, and Randy Clements on the offensive line. So this is where I get into the no portion. Uh, the no thing is actually something you just touched on with Drake being your leading rusher. Uh, that can't happen this year. If the no, offense is going to get – because because we saw that at the very end of the season, everybody said, oh, why did UNC's offense sputter? Well, they're one-dimensional. You had Drake made to throw the ball, and nobody was running yep. the ball effectively. Elijah Green did everything that he could, but the man's – you like him. He's a solid back, but – Considering the other guys on that team, he should mm -hmm. not have been your number one this last okay, season. So, so is it the running back's fault? Or would you say it's the coach's scheme's fault or the player's lack of execution in the running game's fault? Because you got to so, have an offensive line to push the defensive line to run the ball. Correct. I, I'm actually glad you brought that up. I do believe that there was a point where Phil Longo got very excited with running the quarterback. And I think we saw that the 21 22 season, Sam Howell's the last. Sam, Sam Howell, yes. yeah. Sam ran the ball over the place. Then, and, and, and Mac Brown touched on this many times. You know, he said this about Drake, which we knew with about Drake. He says, 
We should not be running design quarterback runs. Drake's going to do it on his own. Sam mm -hmm. was going to do it on his own. It's just the way that they both play. These two guys mirror each other a lot uh, in the way that they play and, 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 and you know play that quarterback position. So mm -hmm. we did not need to be doing design quarterback runs, and that's exactly what Phil Longo got really excited with and seemed to push way too much. Now, I yeah, do was... believe that they're – um, maybe some of that, uh, you know, contributed to there being a little bit lack of a, uh, I guess you could say a confidence in your offensive line that, that you could yep. definitely say that. Uh, but, uh, not only that, but I, I don't think we got as creative with the run game as maybe we were a few seasons, you know, a few seasons ago, a few more seasons ago when you had the likes mm -hmm. of Javante Williams and uh, Michael Carter, but those two guys are in the those are backs, NFL, man. Yeah, those are NFL backs. Elite Javante, vision. Yeah, Javante Williams uh, for sure. He's your top guy in Denver. Yeah, and, and Michael Carter's playing his heart out over there at the New York Jets right now. So, um, you know, Omarion yeah, Hampton and George Pedaway. Yeah, I just saw that, unfortunately. I hate that for him. But, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, um, you know, you – well – Honestly, fortunate. Unfortunately, last year, even though the guys were true freshmen, you know, true freshmen, Petaway and, and Hampton last year, you, you know, this is their year to step up. This is this is the time to step up. The running back room is not, you know, yeah. let's say per se the DB room. It's not that slim. You know, they've got six. No, it's back. four. Yeah, they've got British Brooks coming back. Evidently, uh, uh, Caleb uh, Hood's looked a lot better. I've heard he's fit. Yep. He's moving great. That's good. That's what we want. You got Amari and you've got George. You've got British Brooks. DJ Jones is still there in case you need him. Elijah Green's still on the team. And you got Jordan yeah. Lee who just come in as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the running back room should be fine. Uh, should be, to, to say the least. But, uh, you know, they've got to figure out their ones and twos. I know me and you both, you know, Talking about earlier, how we were saying that Amarian might be that number one. Good, you want that. Uh, personally, I don't. I don't think that George Pettaway is probably too far behind that list. Personally, I, I got to uh, with the speed and everything. We'll see. Yeah, he he's electric. He's real. I mean, he's real shifty. Yeah, um, we saw that in so, Oregon. Uh, I think you saw that in the. Fan U game where he caught a pass out of the back, a little swing pass out of the backfield, hit, right, hit the yeah. dude with the inside out juke, dropped the dude, and scored the touchdown. You you yeah. saw the potential that George Pedaway brings to the game. It's a little just, bit smaller, but he can he can maneuver. Yeah, it's it's can you trust Pedaway on the pass pro aspect? Right. Say on a third down on a third down, and they the defense brings up brings the house on a blitz and. Petaway effectively pick up a blitzer to give Drake May time to get to slide out of the pocket, and then can he break off into the flat to give May a dump down option if nothing's open down the field? Because you right. got at least stymie the blitz, give Drake May time to figure out the blitz and get away from the blitz, and then slip out into the flat to be able to to make yourself open for that dump down pass on. Um, Third, probably I see I see Petaway is more of a third down scat scat back type. Yeah, I, I, I'm um, with you I mean, there. You got you got you got Hampton Brooks and uh, Hood. They're the they're the big power. They both they all three have power. They all three have good speed. Uh, to me, it's just going to come down to is who can have, who ha which back has the best vision. To find the seams and the creases in the offensive line, and takes the right gap instead of just running. Essentially, uh, you saw you saw last year, um, uh, Amari Hampton. He kind of dropped his head, dropped his eyes, and a lot of the time, instead of running into the hole or finding that that first cutback that uh, Javante Williams and Michael Carter are notorious for finding, they most of our backs last year were just running up the back of the offensive line. And then it just creates a massive clog. And then it, what Michael Carter and Javante Williams got four or five yards before contact turns into two or three yards before contact. And you're and you're not making you're not making a defensive lineman I mean, generally missing the hole. 
yeah. you have to be able to find that crease first. That's uh, that's easy pickings for them for sure. Uh, <laughs> especially, you know, if you're going to contend in the top of the ACC with Clemson or Florida State, um, those guys ain't gonna miss. You got to make a miss, and those mm-hmm. guys ain't gonna miss that. That's right there. As as Shaq likes to call it, barbecue that's- chicken. That's it. That is all it is for them. Um, yeah. But top, two top ten teams in the country. To start yeah, off with. Eight and nine this year. And you have the potential mm-hmm. chance to play both of them. You know you're playing Clemson already. But uh, let's just say all goes well and you meet Florida State in the ACC title game. There you go. Who knows what they're going to be at that point in time. We'll, we'll see. You know, we'll see once we get, what, 15 weeks down and from now, 15, some yeah. odd, 15 – 15, 16 weeks from now, we'll see. Yeah. But, um, you know, you the offensive line is really where I believe this team's going to be dictated because let's just call it what we know. Drake's great. We know Drake's going to be great. The wide receiving room. Once in a lifetime. Right. Even if Tez Walker is not on that field, and again, we really hope he is, even if he's not on that field, You've got receivers that should be able to be fine in the offense. Receivers that uh, that Drake knows very well. Uh, kids mm-hmm. that are coming up. I've heard Chris Culliver's already daggum climbing the depth chart. You know that, that oh, there uh, is potential chance. There is. There was high praise for Culliver coming out of high school that he was. Yes. He probably had the potential to be one of the best wide receivers. To probably grace the University of North Carolina. That, I mean, that's that's, that's high something. praise. I mean, that's that's Hakeem. I mean, Hakeem Nix. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what's his name? That plays Eric for Atlanta, right? That no, that's the uh, that's a tight end. Oh yeah, that was the tight end. Um, um he played recent. Huh? Huh? Uh, what is his name? He's he's on. He plays for the Falcons. He's been a big talking point in Falcons training camp this year. Uh, anyway. Yeah. There, there's a North Carolina's had some elite wide receivers go to the league. Yeah. Uh, Hakeem Nix being probably one of the one of the top ones that I can recall in my short yeah. tenure with the fandom. Yeah, and you know, and even in recent histories, at least collegiately, we've had some really good wide receivers. Josh Downs is one of them. Josh Downs is in the oh yeah, well I mean Josh Downs, Antoine Green, Deami Brown. I mean, we still we, we're still you know the jury for the NFL is still out for them. Yeah, uh, but. Very excited to see Josh, Josh Downs this year. Sky is the uh, from what I heard from from what I've read about the Colts training camp. Josh Downs is giving their defensive backs absolute nightmares. Yes, I'm loving it too. I, I I really and I've heard AR 15 or AR five now. I guess he is now, but he's he's finding him and Downs is going to be a, a pretty solid connection. By the way. Sam Howell this year too has been looking really good so far in preseason. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, I watched. I watched that. Uh, Red, I watched the. I watched the Redskins preseason game this week just to yeah. see what Sam was going to do. Yeah, but uh, yeah, um, I really believe it. It goes back onto the offensive line, and that's why I yeah, honestly believe that deep. the uh, that the addition of Randy Clements, especially with Chip Lindsey, is really. And truly, a underrated move uh, within the program this year. And the reason I believe that is mm-hmm. number one, UNC really knows Randy Clements very well because, as we all point out, he he was the one that brought you that Baylor offensive line that allowed them to run all over you a few years ago. Ran and the, all and over, ran all over UNC in that building. They did. And Randy Clements and Chip Lindsey are friends. One of the biggest problems that we had last season, last year in particular, there mm-hmm. began there there began to become a rift within uh, the coaching tell ranks. It, tell it, tell it, tell it. Yeah, the, there was a rift in the coaching ranks, and it's no surprise that Phil Longo was gone now. Now, we thank Phil Longo for everything he did for North Carolina. He did a lot of great things for UNC. Uh, you know, produced well, his so offense many great was offenses. Prolific. It was. It was his amazing. offenses were prolific. And honestly, I think that's why Wisconsin's in the top 25 right now. You know, considering mm-hmm. the, the coaching be. staff they brought in and the potential that mm-hmm. they have. Who knows, you know, what Wisconsin might turn into. We'll, we'll see. You know, we hope to hope the best for Phil up there and, uh, and everything they do up there. But, you know. 
it, there is no, I mean, think about it. Doesn't something just seem a little fishy to you that you go win to the Coastal Division and all of a sudden your offense just starts just falling apart? We were in attendance the next game after that. So we witnessed it. Yeah. After the first I half mean, of, Gen of Georgia Tech, everything, the UNC season, the 17, uh, the, 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 the 17 0 lead, the team never recuperated from whatever happened in that halftime coming back out. Don't know what happened, but they never were the same again. And you heard about rumors of this going on, and you could pick it up. If you listen, if you're a Tar Heel fan that definitely loves to listen to the post game or the pre game interviews, you know, post game interviews, you could start to sense something was going on. Like something's mm -hmm. going on. You could pick up on it. And then when it was confirmed, and I'll <laughs> leave the premium content from the insiders that that came from, I'll leave it to them. Um, because you know, yeah. no need to spill their stuff. They, you know, they they do they work a service and they do a great job over there. But um, it's not a surprise for that we're in a situation that we're in now. But given that, I honestly believe it could be a blessing in disguise for the UNC offense this year because you're bringing in people that know each other well. They've been friends with Mac for a long time. They understand all of this. They're coming in here for a reason. There is pressure on yep. Chip Lindsey. Big time pressure on Chip Lindsay to make sure this offense is humming. Now there's also pressure on Randy Clements to make sure that offensive line and the hat that he wore can go together. That offensive line of, you know, being able to block, keep Drake safe, first off, you know, not give up six sacks in a, mm -hmm. in a single game that we saw a diagram at Georgia mm -hmm. Tech, you know, to keep yep. Drake from getting hit, not only for him, you know, for his sake, but for the team. Also, to create a running game that is going to help Drake, you know, help him from getting hit, help him. Well, from, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, and help well uh, kind of, uh, yeah, and, and yeah, not only that, but, you know, NC State walked in North Carolina. What is one thing they did all game long on the defensive side? What did they do? Drop eight. They dropped eight. Dropped, dropped eight. eight the whole time. Dared, dared him to run the ball against yep. their defensive line. But that's yep. what I, that's what I like about Randy. I, I think he's going to bring a little nasty to the line. They need uh, that. Willie They're Lampkin, experienced. Willie Lampkin, you know he's bringing nasty to the line. Oh, uh, dude, Corey did you Gaynor see where the, uh, the transfer out of Miami nasty? Did you see where Coastal um, got like was in the was in like the top thirty five for AP this year? No, I did not see that. Yeah, they're in the top thirty five, dude. That's awesome. I freaking love it. Go ahead. I also saw where NC State got one vote from the top 25. Yeah, they were the last on the list. You know how many votes Clemson got for the top 25? I didn't look at it. No, I didn't. 1,032. Wow. And that got them awesome. ninth. Ninth. Ninth got 1,032. Yeah. I'm very excited to see how that, you know, because Florida State's looking like, who knows if they'll pan out. We'll see. They're kind of going off expectations like UNC a couple of seasons ago. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Expectations. Yeah. But, um, you know, the, the, I think Randy Clements is going to do a great job for the offensive line. You've already kind of heard some weird, like, I love it listening to the insiders. They're like, you know, one of them that I, that I listen to a lot, he, he's a off, he's, he played offensive line in, in school. And mm -hmm. he's like, I've watched offensive line drills my whole life. Says, I love it. You know, I'm like a junkie for it. And he says, some of the stuff like chaining their feet, he says, I ain't even saw that stuff before. I mean, it was just kind of yeah, cool. chaining their feet together. Yeah. And really working on the biggest, I think the biggest thing that he's been working on is balance. Yep. He says, You can have everything else, but if you're off balance, you know, a guy can push you over easy. And that's the mm -hmm. biggest thing you gotta learn. You gotta have if you're gonna get into a fight with somebody, if you're gonna get into a wrestling match, you're gonna want balance because that's what's gonna yep. keep you got upright. Him. It's going to keep you feet in the you. fight. Right. Yep. And uh, I've heard short area quickness a lot. That, that's been that's been one. I like yep. that a lot. Um, but I think the wide receiver room is going to be good. Drake's going to be great. I am still curious of what Connor Harrell is going to do. Because I think we know now he's probably the consensus QB2. I think that's just pretty much. All right. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's definitely got QB2 wrapped up. But I, I mean, QB2, you hope nothing happens to Drake. 
But if something was to happen to me, I could honestly see this team probably winning three or four games. Three or four games could be the season if Drake, if Drake went down. If you're about if he went down game uh, one? Yeah, if he went down game one. It's a nuclear option. Drake goes down game one. I could see this team finishing in four wins. Four wins easy. Yeah. Unless, that, you know, yeah. Chitlin, unless, unless we, our running game is just immaculate. Yeah, I mean, yes, you 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 still have the electricity with Nate McCollum, hopefully Tez Walker, but at the end of the day, you still have to have somebody that can throw the football consistently. Yeah, and and, and be on um, time and on target and understand what he's doing. And you know, Connor's not even saw the field yet, which I also think and, it's and really I could be key. completely wrong. Yeah, I, and I mean, honestly, we really Connor hope so. Yeah, that we really hope so, but. You know, there was a point in time when he first came in, he was looking really good. I think yeah, UNC, the truth. right? UNC, I think, did a disservice to him when they put him on scout team and just kind of stopped giving him reps throughout the season. I understand Jacoby Criswell was there and he was trying to make sure he stayed, but I think, and maybe it was just me, but I personally thought the second that Drake became quarterback, Jacoby's gone. Like it was going to happen. I oh, yeah. personally felt yeah. that. But you, you also got to give Chriswell credit for cause anybody else. As soon as Drake May was announced QB one, probably they just smacked the transfer portal. Yeah, that, but you, I mean, you gotta give him that. That's, that's sure, for sure. That's good on Chriswell because I mean, uh, who was it? For what was it? The Clemson quarterback that went down, and then the backup came in, and everybody's like, "Oh, why don't he transfer? Why don't he transfer?" But he ends up staying. And then uh, QB one for Clemson goes down, and then the backup comes in and shines. Yeah. If last year, I, if something was to happen to Drake May, I think Jacoby could have stepped right in, and you know yeah. we'd have been okay. Yeah, and he definitely loved um, to run. He definitely loved to run. So he would have fit right in. <laughs> but you know, health and well being to all these players. You, yeah. You know, but the one the one player on offense you cannot lose is Drake May. Yeah, and uh, and honestly, like, don't get me wrong. I, I think the biggest mission for Chip and Randy and Lonnie Galloway, I, I, I have no questions about Lonnie Galloway. Lonnie Galloway has shown, and time after time after time, hey, I know what I'm doing. My wide receivers, we clearly see that. It seems mm -hmm. like UNC has never right, had a wide receiver problem ever. You don't look at like, man, this wide receivers, they could really get better. You, you, you I mean, very Ryan Switzer. Yeah. Ryan Switzer, and, and since Lonnie, Lonnie Galloway came in with Mac, look at all the talent that's come in and, and that is performed in this era of Mac Brown 2.0, and Lonnie Galloway is, you know, responsible for all those great names we just mentioned earlier with Deami Brown, uh, Daz Newsom, uh, Josh Downs, Antoine Green, you know, just mm -hmm. name a few. Uh, and now you've got Kobe Pastor on the rise, Gavin Blackwell's on the rise. Uh, Andre, Andre Green, Green Jr. Jr. You hope to hear him soon. Chris Culliver is already looking pretty, uh, from what I'm hearing. Yeah. Uh, you attract in Nate McCollum, Tez Walker, and they fit right in. You know, Lonnie Galloway has already J. J. Uh, grown some. Uh, yeah, JJ Jones. I, wow, I, I even forgot about JJ Jones there for a second. But um, you know, it's been some great talent that UNC's had on uh, on the wide receiver room. So really, and the tight end room. I have no questions about the tight end room. Really, I really don't. Well, know. Uh, look out for uh, Copenhagen. Yes, I love that dude. I, I think I think Copenhagen is going to be. I would not be surprised if Copenhagen uh, watching, you know, practice videos, uh, listening to uh, mid training camp press conferences with, with the offensive coaches, the head coach. Yeah. Uh, the one thing you hear about tight ends. Uh, John Copenhagen, John Copenhagen. He right. came in as a he came in as a run blocker. But towards the end of the year, you saw Copenhagen start making some big time catches. Mm -hmm. So if you, I think he had. I think he only dropped one ball, or did he, he drop a ball at all? I'm not sure. I can't remember. I was, it's a ridiculous I'd number. Like look, he didn't drop one, I'd or he only dropped sets. one. Yeah. Um. But that's one thing North Carolina hasn't necessarily had a tight right. end that you can attach to the line that can block 
and then slip out and catch. Right. I think that's what caught a lot of teams off guard towards the end of the year is when they saw Copenhaver on the field, they was like, oh, he's 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 in for run fit, run fit, run fit. Play action, Copenhaver runs a little inside slant, boom, wide open. Catches the ball, makes a great play. Mm -hmm. And from everything that I heard, Copenhaver is really is really coming on here. So I would not be surprised to see Copenhaver come out as tight end number one. Yeah, and I know and you honestly, got I'm I'm cheering for it too. And uh, Kamar Morales, Morales, yeah, Kamar Morales, and I know Morales is the has holds the record for most tight end touchdown catches. Mm -hmm. But one thing Nesbitt and Morales both struggle with is pass protection. Right. <laughs> so I think uh, Copenhaver, yeah, Copenhaver's got himself in as an NFL tight end. I think already. Like he's a oh, he's I, an I, type I, tight end for sure. Uh, I mean, a couple more years. I mean, we could look, be looking at a John Baker type situation, right? In North knows? Carolina. I mean, I mean, we saw the piss that John Baker gave, gave teams last year, right? I right. mean, I saw I saw a, a video from training camp where Copenhagen ran a uh, ran a route, caught a ball, outran the safety. That's crazy. That means he's gotten slimmer. That's awesome. He, Outran our safeties after he caught the ball. Man, that's awesome, man. Took it to the Baja. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, we got a lot of – we've got a lot of chances to look at this offense over the past few weeks. You know, I think – I personally think, you know, from all the things that we've been hearing throughout the – throughout preseason camp and, um, you know, summer – or fall camp, that is, that – the offense is going to be looking pretty good. You got the questions of the running back room. You got the questions of the run. Yep. Um, you know, Tez Walker is still up in the air. We, I, I really wish they would get this thing figured out quick because the team needs that for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll see if any news of that comes. We will obviously hit on this. We'll give our conversations on it, whether it be good or bad. Uh, preferably be good because if if it comes back bad, I really don't know what I'm going to say on this on this thing. But. Um, we will have a defensive one of these coming out in the next few days, and then we got some other stuff as we kick on and get on down our road to Charlotte, September 2nd, 7.30 p.m. on ABC. I'll be there. Night game. I'll be there, too. I'll be a few seats down from you. We will be. Come find us. We Come will find be us, right people. There. We will. We are going to be there, and uh, it's getting close, man. I, I can I can feel it, man. It's. Ah, you know, yeah, season's it's... almost here. The the helmets are almost out. Um, I I'm looking forward to to seeing them out there again, man. I'm looking forward to it. We might have to do a uh, what we think the colorway will be that we'll run out to. You know, a a, a prediction of the colorway. Mm. We'll, we'll we'll have to do that soon. We'll do that. We'll do that in a in a video that we've been talking about upcoming. We'll we'll get to that. We'll do it. But anyway, we're going to get out of here. We want to thank you all for watching. We want to thank you all for being here. Be sure and click more videos over here in this area somewhere. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but in, in this area somewhere. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we uh, we appreciate all you for, for coming yeah, out. Like, watching. subscribe, share, sure. tell your friends, your aunts, your uncles. Cousins, cousins, your second cousins. Second cousins are key, I hear. Do all that. <laughs> Do all that. Great ants. Anyway, see you later, buddy. We'll see you, man. See ya. Go Heels. Go Heels.